We will hit on the Washington Huskies here. And I got to tell you, I like the coaching hire. Kalen DeBoer, this team went 4-8 and eight last year under Jimmy Lake and, uh, and did not look good at all. I mean, there's a reason why they had to fire him after two seasons, and one of them being a shortened COVID season. Everybody could tell that that thing was going south in a quickness. I mean, it was ridiculous. So, uh, their postgame win expectancy, four and a half wins last year. So, yeah, you know, maybe they could have won five, but it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, <laughs> none of that stuff would have mattered. They had plenty of uh, talent to be able to do it. Roster strength sits at number 30 in the country, number 38 on offense, number uh, 30 on defense. Returning production this year is number 81. I don't think that that's necessarily going to matter when you're bringing in an entirely new scheme on offense and, and for the most part on defense as well. Um, last year's offense was a complete disaster. Number 106 in PPA per drive. Uh, the rushing success was okay, number 53 there, but passing success rate was number 82. They were number 126 in explosive play rate. Like, this is really bad. I mean, just really, really bad. And and obviously, I mean, it's not that Washington expects to be a throw-it-all-over-the-yard kind of team. They don't expect to go full air raid here. But you got to have some downfield consistency or just a threat of it. And Dylan Morris was not able to do that. Um, Penix was productive in DeBoer's offense. Like, I would imagine he'll be the starter. Uh, Heward probably backing him up. I don't know that Dylan Morris will see the field again at Washington. They they got eight starters back on offense, um, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> That's It's a weird number here. Uh, if you see on the screen there, 76% of their offense is returning, and that's number 26 in the country. Uh, 55% of their defense is returning, and that's number 97, which is what gives you that number 81 overall. Uh, you know, at this, there's obvious talent here that was bogged down by incredibly conservative play calling. I mean, it, we talked about Oregon being conservative. This looked Oregon looked downright explosive. I mean, it was it was really, really bad. Um, you got to wonder how quickly DeBoer can improve the offense. Like, is this an overnight fix? Like, if he just installs, um, if he installs uh, Penix Jr. like with a good offensive line and Penix is healthy, then does that fix everything? That's I, I don't know the answer to that question. I think I think there's enough talent. I think DeBoer is quick enough at installing offenses. He'll be able to he'll be able to fix this thing. As far as the defense, new DCs are William Inge, and I hope I say that right, and Eric Morrell from Fresno. And that team was surprisingly good on defense last year. Go look at the numbers. Yeah, go back and watch my uh, my Fresno preview from not that long ago. This team, the edge rusher, Zion Tupeloa uh, Fetui. <laughs> He's back from an Achilles injury. And I did not say that right, and I apologize. And you guys can jump in the comments and tell me how wrong I butchered that. Good gracious. Uh, transfers Cam Bright from Pitt and Chris Mole from UAB. They help at linebacker. Experienced at the safety position. Cornerbacks could be an issue. Defensive line has talent, but they were awful against the run last year. Number 114, rushing success rate allowed. If you are Washington and you have this kind of defensive talent, there is no reason why you should be letting teams just run the ball all over you unless, once you get later in the season, you have just quit. I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. Looking at the keys to the season here, you got to strike now if you are Washington, which is why they fired Jimmy Lake. Uh, changes at Oregon, Cal's lack of offense, Oregon State's lack of defense, a new coach at Washington State, Stanford's down, et cetera. Like, you've got to strike now in the Pac-12 before USC really gets going, and it might already be too late. Like, you might have hired, you might have should have hired Kalen DeBoer or somebody like that last year. Like, I mean, it really, you know, I, the hiring of Jimmy Lake was really interesting. Very interesting. Regardless, off of that, number 97 in returning production on defense, uh, you're you're probably going to need the offense to step up a little bit, especially early. Uh, you start out with Kent State, Portland State, and Michigan State. And then you dive into conference play against Stanford, and then you got two road games back-to-back at UCLA, at Arizona State. Uh, expect the turnover margin to clean up. I mean, they were number 111 in turnover margin last year. The change in quarterback should should help clean that up just a little bit. Um, 
But even still, like, you're going to be taking more risks, which is crazy. Like, as conservative as they were last year, that turnover margin is putrid. Uh, penalties per game is perfectly fine here. I've got this team going 8-4. and four. I trust DeBoer, and, and I like their schedule enough that I think that they can be successful this year. And so I'm I'm going to roll with Kalen DeBoer to take them to a bowl game to to completely flip the record. Like, I think this team could be really good. Especially, you hit on quarterback, and, and I think one of them will do well. Either Heward or Penix is going to do good things. So I'm I'm all in here. Uh, I like Washington. I like them at 8-4. The losses here, I've got Michigan State at Cal, at Oregon, at, uh, duh, 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 at UCLA, at Cal, at Oregon. There we go. Um, again, these are tricky. Very, very tricky. I do want you to leave some comments, though, and let me know what you think about this record because... Uh, some of these are, are tough to figure out. Real tough to figure out. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.